This episode and others like it are made possible by the generous support of my patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to help me produce more content like this and get early access to every new video, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash second thought. Can you trust the media? It's a common question, and one that's popping up more and more often in our increasingly polarized world. Over the years, we've seen numerous examples of news networks twisting the truth to fit a certain narrative, or spreading outright lies in order to gain public support for military initiatives. Today, with more news at our fingertips than ever before, it's important to really consider the question, can you trust the media? So, in this episode, that's what we're going to discuss. Renowned academic and social critic Noam Chomsky once said, He who controls the media controls the minds of the public. In Manufacturing Consent, his work explaining the failure of capitalism and corporate control of the US, he focuses on highlighting the role that the media has played for decades, and continues to play, in manipulating public opinion for the benefit of private interests. In today's climate, it's not hard to find people who denounce the mainstream media as a pile of lies and fabrications, but then run to Fox News or other such networks as a reliable source of information, not realizing that, whomever they listen to, all modern news outlets are controlled by a set of interests that have nothing to do with sharing useful, educational, or trustworthy information. Just 21 companies own all the media outlets in the US, five of which own all the major news networks of the country. You might remember from one of my earlier videos that these big five are Comcast, Disney, News Corp, National Amusements, and AT&T. This quasi-monopoly allows those who own these companies to feed the nation a twisted version of reality, and make people believe whatever they want us to believe. This creates an environment in which only the news that fits the interest of the individuals who own these private companies makes it to the public. This corporate domination of the media goes hand in hand with the corporate domination of the government, and perpetuates a system where absurdly wealthy individuals run the show without ever needing to be elected. There's a common opinion among many Americans that the media is entirely the domain of liberal elites. That is not the case. Far from being controlled by coastal liberals trying to paint all conservatives as racist and homophobic, the mainstream media is controlled by the same overarching interest groups as supposedly alternative media like Fox and Voice of America. All modern news sources have become a single, unified front aimed at manufacturing consent and steering the conversation away from real news and towards pointless aesthetic disagreements. Those who own the networks may want to appear to espouse different views, but at the end of the day, they're all staunchly capitalist and benefit from the same tax cuts as every other rich business mogul. But since they have to maintain a veneer of objectivity, we get news networks that fight over petty cultural squabbles while quietly agreeing on all the big stuff. The news you see today has very little to do with informing you about what is going on around the world in a clear and objective manner. Today's news outlets only focus on two things pandering to the biases of their audience, and indirectly promoting the financial agendas of specific industries. For most of its existence, the American media has painted our way of life as the best way of life, whether for its economic opportunity for right-leaning media, or standards of democracy and fairness for left-leaning media. We have been fed the lie that America is the number one country in the world and indoctrinated to believe it. The only thing America can truly claim the number one spot for is wasting money on the military. And how do we justify that? Just turn on the news. For decades, the US media has created news stories to glorify intervention in foreign countries, often lying outright about certain events. The tiny number of terror attacks on American soil are covered from all angles, but the vast and ongoing devastation wrought in the Middle East by the US military and our murderous sanctions barely get a mention. And the media doesn't only avoid mentioning US interventions, it also avoids those of its friends and allies. In the 1970s, when Indonesia invaded East Timor and occupied neutral territory, killing thousands, the media said nothing. Indonesia was a US ally. Today, the conflict in Yemen has been labeled as one of the world's worst humanitarian crises, and it's been going on for six years. Innocent people are dying in atrocious conditions every single day. Have you seen any media coverage of this lately? Has Fox, CNN, MSNBC, ABC, or any of the others said anything about the plight of the Yemeni people lately? No. Why is that? Because the Saudi army is largely responsible for the murders. And who arms the Saudi army? The United States. Once again, corporate interests and the country's bottom line supersede the right to accurate information. No matter which way these outlets lean, they are all guilty of filtering the information we receive to suit the interest of their owners. Private ownership of the media has turned information into a commodity, not a right. And commodities have a value, which can be turned into profit. The name of the game in American media is not to inform, engage, and empower the world, as CNN so eloquently puts it, but to sell, manipulate, and turn a profit for shareholders. 
Like anything, information is a good that can be sold to the highest bidder, and corporations are willing to pay a lot of money to get the information they want in front of your eyes. It doesn't matter if you think all immigrants are criminals, or if you think Trump should be impeached three or four more times. There's a network out there which has some information to sell you, and it knows exactly how to do so. Polarization in modern media is not diversity. It is not choice. It is simply a blatant abuse of human nature. We all like to hear things that we agree with. The name for this phenomenon is confirmation bias. If I think socialism is a conspiracy to destroy America, I'll turn on the news channel that agrees with me and reinforces my belief. Which, frankly, is all of them, but Fox tends to use that line most effectively. The American media has mastered the art of pandering to its audience, and will continue to do so indefinitely as long as it helps to turn a profit. It doesn't matter if what they are saying is even remotely close to the truth. To make matters worse, the American obsession with free speech has created a media ecosystem where corporate mouthpieces can say whatever they want, asserting their unalienable right to spew meticulously crafted propaganda into millions of households. Despite the fact that the First Amendment does not apply to news networks, our obsessive fixation on being able to say whatever we want, regardless of truthfulness, has given news anchors an excuse to lie outright. These days, free speech means nothing more than, I can say whatever I want and promote it as the truth to whoever is willing to listen to me. This perversion of what free speech really means has removed any and all accountability from the media to base their claims in factual truth. Anyone can now go ahead and say whatever they want on air as long as it generates more revenue to the channel. That's the bottom line. If it brings in more viewers, if it's profitable, it's the truth. The best example of this is the way that panels are constructed to debate topics on air. For decades, human-caused climate change has been established as fact, and over 97% of experts agree it's happening. So why is it that every news panel contains as many experts on the matter who accurately report the evidence of climate change as irrelevant grifters who do not? This is not to offer unbiased news. It is intended to muddy the waters so that people continue to doubt established science. Human-induced climate change does not suit the interest of the hugely powerful oil, gas, automotive, crews, dairy, and meat lobbies. So they make sure that the media gives as much attention to nonsense as it does to fact. The most damning bit of evidence when it comes to climate change coverage is the fact that Exxon, one of the largest polluters on the planet, was one of the first to conduct extensive studies on the effects of fossil fuel use. Their internal documents reveal that they knew just how bad the problem would become. And instead of working with policymakers to find a solution, they buried their findings and launched a decades-long disinformation campaign to keep the public in the dark. When you see climate debates on TV, be aware that you're watching an ongoing oil and gas lobby crusade to maintain their profits, at the expense of the survivability of the planet and the future of our species. Would you find it normal if any time a NASA scientist is interviewed to talk about, say, progress on Mars, there was a flat earther there to contrast views? Of course not. That would be a waste of time, and would only serve to dilute the facts presented by the expert, in an effort to sow doubt. That's exactly what news networks are for. Not to inform, but to obfuscate. To prolong the profitability of damaging industries as long as possible. To bring in views by making people angry or afraid. We are a long way from what reliable media is supposed to look like. There is no such thing as a trustworthy news channel or honest media outlet. You cannot trust the media. However, that does not mean that everything they say is a waste of time and you should only believe what fits your views. That path only leads to further division and the destruction of trust among the people. What it does mean is that you must recognize that what you're watching and listening to has a corporate agenda, that you are being sold a prepackaged worldview, not provided reliable information. In the world of corporate news outlets, if the information is free, you are the product. As products, we have value to those who finance and manipulate the media. We are pawns for them to use in forwarding their agenda, so long as they can manipulate our views and manufacture our consent. The individuals who own the media are not so foolish as to promote their views in the open. They select the right-thinking personnel, editors, journalists, and CIA wannabes like Anderson Cooper and Tucker Carlson. And they set the priorities of each outlet to create the narrative that will make people agree with whatever it is they want agreed to. Western media is a well-oiled propaganda machine that uses a variety of techniques to manipulate opinion. It is not a news source. Yes, sometimes a news anchor or editor will present the public with a more honest version of events even if it goes against the narrative of the channel. They usually quit the next day and go work for another corporate network. But that is just part of how a good propaganda machine works. It allows for some dissent every once in a while, but makes sure that enough of its core message floods the airtime so that we get the illusion of diverse and honest coverage while gobbling up the lies we're meant to believe. Why is this neoliberal ideology so dominant in the developed world? 
not because it makes good economic or social sense, but because by its very nature it opened up the media to private ownership, which in turn now declares that pure capitalism and neoliberal policy are the only way for society not to collapse into chaos. It's a never-ending cycle. Corrupt policy enabled the corruption of the press, which now enables more corruption of policy, and on and on. Power is held by corporations who steer the state, which then returns more power to corporations and both use the media to tell a story that preserves the status quo. The modern media is the ideal tool for effectively and subtly spreading ideological messages to the public. All you need is money. And this corporate tool is working as intended, and incredibly efficiently. So efficiently, in fact, that a growing number of people honestly believe that the best way to improve our situation is to oppose the mainstream and liberals. This fabrication has given rise to a completely fake anti-establishment movement run by the elites and fueled by the media. The global rise in popularity of crooked politicians like Donald Trump, Jair Bolsonaro, and Nigel Farage has been facilitated by the lies of supposedly alternative, mostly right-wing media. These outlets, financed by the wealthy elite, have worked hard at selling the lie that by voting for these people, we are supporting someone like us. A man of the people. Someone who understands. That is a complete lie. There is nothing like us about these people. They are part of the elite. They've simply decided to try a new approach to further divide us and strengthen their hold and that of their ultra-wealthy friends on society. Nowhere is there a better example of this than on Fox News, where news anchor Tucker Carlson continues to rail against the establishment, blame immigrants, and claim to be just like his viewers. His message is simple and fits perfectly with his audience's bias. They agree wholeheartedly and reinforce their views every day, thinking that they're being provided real information by someone just like them. Tucker Carlson gets paid $10 million a year to spout venomous lies on TV. He rails against the elites while being the heir to a frozen food fortune built on the back of abusive immigrant labor. He is not a man of the people. He sits firmly at the table of the elites and uses populist rhetoric to manipulate his audience and make sure that the status quo is preserved so that his giant bank account continues to fatten. The bottom line is this. The media is one giant propaganda machine fueled by the wealthy for the wealthy, all with the support of a corporate-controlled state. News outlets are doing an incredible job of keeping the population divided and at odds with each other over frivolous nonsense so that no meaningful change can ever take place and the status quo that makes the rich richer is maintained. Our media fits perfectly into a framework of neoliberal hegemony and not a word that comes out of their mouths deviates from that mission. The best thing we can do is to recognize this fact and attempt to understand others and their biases, as well as recognizing our own. If we truly want to overcome the mind control operation of the elites, then we need to stop listening to them and start listening to each other. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that this kind of content is made possible by my patrons on Patreon. This kind of video, while very important, is something that sponsors won't touch. In order to pay the bills and keep this channel running, I rely on AdSense revenue, sponsors, and donations from generous viewers. By producing content like this, I lose out on both sponsors and AdSense. If you enjoy the kind of videos I'm producing, and you're able to chip in even a dollar a month, I would greatly appreciate the support. You can find my Patreon page, join our growing Discord server, and get early access to every episode at patreon.com slash secondthought. If you enjoyed this video, consider dropping a like. If you hated it, a thumbs down. You can check out my previous episodes by clicking the links on your screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.